Hello everyone. We'll consider how to become a professionally registered engineer in Canada and we'll get started right away. To become a licensed engineer in Ontario, you must be licensed by the regulatory body Professional Engineers. It is illegal to use the title Professional Engineer or any variation thereof as an occupational or business title if you are not licensed by PEO. Non-licensed individuals can still work in an engineering job, but they must work under the supervision of a licensed engineer who will take professional responsibility for their work. To become a licensed engineer in Canada, you must prove that you have met the following five requirements to the engineering regulator in the province or territory where you like to practice. The first is academic, so you've obtained an engineering education. The next is work experience, so you have supervised work experience that uh, demonstrates your ability to apply engineering knowledge. The third is language, so you communicate competently in at least one of Canada's two official languages, that's English or French. Good character. You've demonstrated truth, honesty, and trustworthiness in your conduct. And the fifth is professionalism and ethics. So you have passed the professional practice examination, the PPE. After signing up and connecting to the portal and sending your application, you would see information regarding the application submission date and also the status of your application. If you are a graduate of an engineering program outside of Canada and the USA, so an international engineering graduate, you should go through the non CEAB. So that's the Canadian Engineering Accreditation Board process. Before you start the application, contact the PEO for information required for their foreign credential recognition process. So things like um, the documents required, the examination details, registration requirements, and the fees associated to complete the process. Next, you'll have to gather all your credential, all your documents, such as your degrees, your transcripts, your course curriculum, a proof of work experience, um, and all relevant documents before you start the process. Okay. You also need to check to see if this document would require translation. Okay. After you arrive in Ontario, if you have already had your academic qualifications assessed, you should contact the PEO when you arrive to continue the licensure process. Now you'll be asked for proof um, regarding your full legal name, your PEO file number, which is a number that you'll be given when you start the application process. Okay. And you must also resubmit an official English translation of your documents, um, which is certified by a translator from the Association of Translators and Interpreters of Ontario. So that's the ATIO or prepared and certified by a Canadian professional engineer. The very first step of the application process is for the candidate to create an account through the PEO portal to start the professional engineering licensing application. So this will be using the non CEAB process for graduates of an engineering program from outside of Canada or the USA. It's very important for you to start this process very early on, even before you come to Canada, because the process can actually take um, plenty of time. 
you would also see information regarding the deadline for submission okay step one academic assessment gather and mail all the required documents to the peo so you need to check and prepare the following supporting documents so the png application fee proof of identity documents so this will be things like your permanent residency card or your copr the next is um, the official transcript of your degree um, diplomas degree uh, your certificates and translations if necessary and if you've got copies they have to be certified by a notary public or the png and like we said earlier if the documents are not in english um, english translations must be prepared by a certified member of the atio okay you'd also need to provide english descriptions of the course content um, in addition you have to provide a detailed description of all engineering courses taken also information about the thesis or the abstracts and confirmation of um, the postgraduate degrees you'd also need to provide information regarding your engineering experience the peo's academic requirements committee so the arc will then assess your academic background and determine equivalency to established standards the assessment may take up to two months after the receipt of all supporting documentation now as a result of the arc's assessment the applicants follow three different parts so a b and c to their next step in the licensure so a the applicant has met the academic requirements and advances to the national professional practice examination b applicants who do not meet the academic requirement are assigned technical exams to demonstrate whether they have an equivalent academic background and the knowledge required for licensing now peo has two streams of technical exams the confirmatory or specific examination program and c the applicant does not meet the minimum academic requirement for licensure the applicant will be issued a notice of determination to be refused to be issued a license and the application will be withdrawn confirmatory examination program cep the cep is comprised of three technical examinations and one complementary studies examination it provides the applicant with an opportunity to confirm that they have obtained the equivalent education qualifications to satisfy peo's academic requirements for licensure in the discipline of assessment specific examination program sep applicants whose academic qualifications are judged by peo to fall between those of a technology diploma and those of an engineering degree will be assigned a sep now this program may consist of up to 18 examinations and would include basic technical and complementary examinations plus an engineering thesis basic studies examinations are a prerequisite and must be addressed first it's important for candidates to refer to peo's technical examinations program so for information the exams are offered twice every year Ryerson's Internationally Educated Engineers Qualification Bridging Program, the IEEQB. The IEEQB program provides internationally educated engineers 
with an opportunity to meet the academic requirements for professional engineering licensure in Ontario. This program is intended specifically for licensure applicants to whom PEO has offered a CEP and covers the content of the confirmatory examination program in the discipline of assessment. Applicants who successfully complete the Ryerson IWQB program will satisfy their CEP with PEO. Step two, pass the NPPE. This is a very important step. So upon the PEO confirming that the applicant has met the academic requirement, the applicant will have to advance to step two, which is writing the NPPE. Now all applicants must pass the NPPE before um, they can be granted registration as a professional registrant. The examination is computer-based. It's a closed book examination. So obviously it's online. Um, it takes 2.5 hours. It consists of 110 multiple choice questions. You get one point for each correct answer and you are not penalized for any wrong answers. So the, the, the exam will actually test the candidate's knowledge of the Canadian professional practice, engineering law, ethics, and professional liability. Step three, experience requirement. A minimum of 48 months of acceptable, verifiable post-bachelor's engineering experience of which at least 12 months must be in a Canadian jurisdiction under the supervision of a licensed Canadian professional engineer. For this step, it's important to refer to the guide to required experience for licensing as a professional engineer in Ontario. It is also important for you to download the necessary documents for recording your engineering work experience from the Professional Engineers Ontario website. Step four, license review and approval. Once the applicant has satisfied all the requirements for licensing, the registrar will review and give approval for the PNG license to be granted. After the PNG licensing and annual fees are paid and processed, the applicant is licensed as a professional engineer. And there you have it. Now we have seen a significant increase in the number of engineers requesting for help with preparations to become professionally registered in Canada or help with securing engineering jobs in Canada. Now, there are loads of reasons to explore moving to Canada. Many engineers in the UK and from different parts of the world are actually considering Canada um, because Canada is one destination where engineers can not only continue their careers, but also can grow from strength to strength. Now, the thing to note is that um, even though we presented um, Ontario, um, each province will provide professional engineer status to practice engineering in their jurisdiction, okay? And unlike um, in the UK, if you do not have the PNG recognition, you cannot call yourself an engineer in Canada. Now, once you get the PNG recognition, you have to maintain it by completing professional um, developments, okay, in different categories. And you also have to report them to your professional body every year. Now, if you fail to do this, and if you fail to maintain your professional development, um, your PNG status can actually be revoked 
and you no longer have the engineering license to practice engineering okay um, so this is the same um, as in the USA for instance okay so do not hesitate to contact us if you need any help and um, we'd like to thank you especially for watching and see you very soon bye bye